Gail Rosica, you are a formidable presence here in the Capitol, as always. Tell us about your thoughts now that we've wrapped it up. We're past midnight. The legislative season is officially ended. What sticks out in your mind as being, you know, some of the successes, maybe some of the things you had wished for that didn't occur? Uh, just your, your thoughts in general. Well, first of all, the greatest success, the thing that makes me the happiest is that it's over. We're always happy when it's over, you know. It, it, because we have such a short, short ses session, some things that you want don't get passed and others you wish hadn't passed do, but I'm always happy when it's over because whatever didn't pass this year will be back next year and some things didn't get passed exactly the way we wanted them, so they'll come back next year and fix them again. So, so overall, it was a very successful year. There were some bills that we absolutely did not want and most of those didn't pass. So I'm always happy about that. Specifically, any any big successes for the Eagle Forum and for the people that uh, that work with you? Well, one of the things, one of our biggest concerns this year was that uh, we had a bill for a call for a constitutional convention, an Amendment Five in, uh, convention, and we absolutely are opposed to that. And it was one of those things that right down to the end I was concerned about. We, it did fail in the House, but sometimes things, sometimes, a lot of the times up here, things are resurrected at the last minute. So we're grateful that they signed and died and that was dead for this year. And one more year that we're safe from having to be one of those states that call a constitutional convention. So that was very important to us. And then there were some other bills that we were concerned that needed some amendments. One was the child abuse bill. And we just wanted to parental opt-in, parental permission put on that bill, and that happened, and so we were grateful for that. So many other bills. There were some education bills, and some of them got watered down, some got amended, but at the end of the, year, of the session, there were some good bills passed. We're uh, closing in on a new caucus session or caucus season here. Tell me about your thoughts on, about women in politics, in Utah politics specifically. We see that there, there are a number that will be retiring here and won't be here next year. What will happen to the women's voice in Utah politics? Oh, I think the women's voice will always be in Utah politics. You know, in, in Utah, especially on the Republican side, there's not as many women that are elected, but they don't. there's not as many that run. If women run, they get elected. But, uh, you know, here in Utah, we kind of stay home and rear our children and, and uh, like that like being home and so we don't go out and run for political office as much. I've never been interested in running for political office. I'm up here a lot, but I, there's a difference between coming up here as a volunteer and coming up here as an elected official. Uh, I like the freedom that uh, allows me to be home when I want to be home and I think a lot of other women think the same way because I've never seen women not be able to be a part. Any woman who wants to come up here can come up here and any woman who runs can get elected. They just choose not to have as many women in Utah. Uh, at least as Republicans that choose not to run because we have other things we want to do with our life. Like go to sleep, go home and go to sleep probably right about now. Like right now. <laughs> Thanks for speaking with us. All right. Bye now. Bye.